Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at unit testing in Swift, particularly for iOS development. Sorry about that, my uh, uh, antivirus decides to pop up every now and then. Uh, so anyways, yeah, we're going to be talking about unit testing in iOS, what it is, um, how it's used, especially professionally, and we're going to be doing some examples. So let's start off by firing up Xcode like we always do. Let's create a new project. Uh, we're going to do a single view application. Let's call it test like we usually do. And let's come down here and also check uh, this box for include unit tests. You can leave UI tests unchecked and hit enter. Save it wherever you'd like, so desktop in our case. And once Xcode decides to come back, let's expand this. I don't know why we always have to expand it. It's slightly annoying, but let's go ahead and do that. Um, and let's start talking about unit testing. So unit testing, if you're unfamiliar, is the software process, uh, and it's not iOS specific. It's a software process of testing various units of code in your application. Uh, whatever that program application may be, it could be in Java, iOS, Android, etc. Um, and it's really uh, done to prevent bugs uh, when other people, new developers or engineers come and change code in the future. So for example, you might have a function that multiplies two numbers. So the test basically feeds the function kind of uh, dummy data and does assertions uh, based on whoever is writing the test of what the expected outcome is. So that's in iOS particularly, in Xcode, um, the way that it's set up is you have a target, which is your actual application, which is test in our case. And then we have, uh, well, maybe test wasn't the best name for this application, but then there is a tests target for your app. Um, now we call it our app test, which maybe doesn't help our case in terms of making the naming simple, but imagine if this was like Facebook, it would be Facebook and Facebook tests. So let's, um, let's go ahead and delete everything in here because uh, we're going to start off fresh and clean so we can understand every single thing we do along the way. So we're going to start um, actually in here in the actual app. I want you to create a new file and it's going to be a Swift file uh, and let's call it um, math stuff. And this file is going to have a couple functions in it. Um, as well, firstly, it's going to have a class called, let's call it math. See, so it's called math stuff because I think math is built into uh, Swift, so it might have a naming issue. And there's going to be a couple functions in here um, that do some basic arithmetic. So let's write out three functions um, that add two integers, uh, multiply two integers, and divide two integers, and return the value. So let's create three functions. We're going to do add numbers. It's going to have x as an int, as an int, and then also return an int. So we can return x plus y. Uh, and let's make our life easy and copy and paste this a couple times. And let's, for this one, do multiply. Divide, multiply, divide. So this is a very, very simple example of three quote unquote utility functions that we've written that we might use somewhere on our app. So if we want to write tests for this, um, we want to make sure that the functions are doing what we expect them to do. So you can imagine if someone in the future accidentally like changes this to be that, it'll start failing our tests when we try to run them. And that'll be kind of a aha moment for that developer. Hey, you broke something. You probably want to go take a look at the tests that failed uh, and see what you broke. So let's write some tests. So let's come into here and we're going to write three tests. Uh, the three tests are going to test the three respective functions. So naming wise, basically they're just functions and they need to start with the name test. And then after that, call it whatever you want. So we're going to do test add stuff. And what we want to do in here is we're going to say our math function. So let's say math or our math class rather is math stuff. Let's see if we can pick up on it. 
just not picking up on it. And that's because, let's see, why is it? So let's actually go ahead and change this up here to a normal device. And um, this we don't need to change. Let's go back to our math stuff file. Let's make this public. And it doesn't need to inherit anything, but that should be sufficient for our test target to pick up on it. And so these little circle things run your actual test or you can run the entire test class. Um, and it's not picking up on this, uh, on this class, this math stuff. So let's see if I named it correctly, which I did. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Sometimes Xcode decides to just not cooperate. Uh, cool. Okay, I picked up on it after I ran it. So sometimes if you have an error, right now we have a warning because we're not using this. Um, we're not using this property we're creating. But sometimes if you have an error and uh, Swift and Xcode can't find your class, just try compiling with a command B or running the test with one of these little button things, and it should resolve your error. Uh, anyways, so in in this math function, we want to test the add capability that we've added. So we're going to do math dot add. And let's add uh, one and two, and let's put the result in here. So the meat of a unit test is essentially what I'm about to do. So what we're gonna say here is we're gonna do an XC assert equals results and three. So there are a couple of functions that reside in this XC test case class, which is a part of this framework that Apple has included for us that basically assert things are what they should be. So there's a couple of variants of this function, right? So there is X C assert true. If you want to make sure that something is true, there is an X C assert false, as you can imagine. There's an X C assert nil. If you want to make sure something is nil, um, there is an XE assert not nil, so on and so forth. But these are the actual common ones that are very heavily used. Um, and they ultimately outline the results that you were expecting as a person who developed this. So in the future, if someone ever changes the core functionality in here, this test would fail. So let's show that in practice. So let's get rid of this. If we run this test, you'll see that this check mark will remain green because the result is indeed three. But if we change this to be, I don't know, 31 and run it again, you'll see it'll give us a failure. And it'll actually give us specifics here. It'll say three doesn't equal 31. So it expected three, but it gave us 31. Um, and professionally speaking in industry, most big companies and big apps heavily rely on testing uh, and unit testing specifically in their iOS apps just because of the sheer size of the projects, it becomes very easy to break something. Um, and oftentimes um, they have setups, these companies, uh, where all tests have to run before you can merge your code into a project to make sure whatever changes you made didn't break anything. So let's write three more functions to further exemplify this. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it and we're gonna do test multiply stuff, multiply, if I can type correctly. And we're gonna do test, I think divide was the other one we did. And we're gonna do multiply. We can delete this because we already have it, like so. Uh, so we're gonna multiply one and two, and obviously that's two. And we're going to do divide, and let's do 10 and two, and we expect five. And let's go ahead and run all these by pressing this button next to the class itself, which will run all the functions in one shot. And we see we get a check mark here because all of these functions do indeed pass. Uh, similarly, let's go ahead and mess up the results that we expect. And let's go ahead and run this again. And you'll see that the first one here will pass, but these two down here will fail uh, inevitably because our result is not what we have told the assertion to expect. So that's kind of a glimpse of unit testing. Um, it's definitely a good idea to get situated and familiar with testing as a whole in iOS. Uh, if you're expecting to go into industry or 
Um, you have a desire to work on these large scale apps, Facebook, Instagram, Microsoft apps, etc. Um, another thing that I'll mention is that there are some libraries that some third party companies like Uber and others have developed to make testing a little easier. Um, there's one called Nimble in particular, which would be like that. And it provides similar functions to this XC assert equal or XC assert um, not nil in that list that we went over, but they're named a little more cleanly. Um, they're like expect functions. I'll actually make a video going over that. The one thing that I didn't talk about is this at testable thing we have going on up here. So we can see that obviously we need to import whatever we want to test. So we want to import, we're importing test here, which is the name of this app that we created, uh, which maybe again, wasn't the best name for the purposes of this video, but uh, we're going to run with it. The testable basically says uh, to it, basically the functions and the stuff in this target, we're going to treat them as uh, in scope. So the things that are public will be public, uh, things that are internal, in terms of scope, we'll be able to access in here. Uh, but more or less, this gives us access without going into the very, very nitty gritties of it. Uh, it. Gives us access to the stuff that resides within here to test. So in some larger apps, what people will do is they'll bundle uh, things into frameworks. So let's say we have a framework called math. Let's call it math kit. If we want to test stuff in here, we can import that. Now, obviously, it's going to give us an error because this doesn't exist, um, like so. But that's what this testable is up here. Um, additionally, this just gave us one file um, that we can test in. It's a very similar Swift file to any class. It's a class that inherits from XC test case. But you can similarly do file, uh, a right-click, new file. Um, you can do a Cocoa touch class. We can keep this as Swift and make this ST XC test case, if I can spell it. Um, and we can do, we can call it whatever we want. And we can add multiple of these files and continue to add tests. And we have an info plist in here similar to our actual app. This is a little out of scope for this video, so I won't mention it, but I will just say that it's here because you guys can definitely see it's here. Um, but that's about it. That's a very brief intro to unit testing. Um, it's definitely not the most kind of fun and like uh, attractive thing in terms of like the world of iOS um, animation and UI and that stuff is far more pretty and fun and cool to do. But testing is super important when you work at scale with apps that are used by billions of users, just so you make sure you don't break stuff. Um, and it's very good in terms of like industry. It's something that is often uh, talked about in interviews. Um, it often also shows your um, not seniority, but kind of your aptitude to understand that testing is a component of iOS workflow. So definitely don't uh, turn a blind eye to it. And yeah, that's about it. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. Uh, it helps out the videos in the channel a lot. I'm trying to post more consistently lately. Um, I'm going to have more videos coming for you guys. Subscribe if you're new. I do videos on Swift, iOS, anything app related, uh, and a couple other technology thoughts here and there along the way. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.